Many legal battles revolve around contract interpretation. What do the terms the parties agreed to even mean? One party's condition precedent is another party's promise, in the 1985 case of Jones Associates v. Eastside Properties. In 1977, an engineering firm called Jones Associates entered into a professional services contract with a real estate development company called Eastside Properties. For a fixed fee, Jones Associates agreed to provide a feasibility study, master plan, nine record surveys, and nine short plats for Eastside Properties' land parcel in King County, Washington. The contract was a standard printed form, but Eastside Properties added, among other things, an express condition precedent regarding a satisfactory economic feasibility study. In May of 1978, Jones Associates submitted Eastside Properties' short plat application to King County for approval. The county rejected the application, citing a number of conditions that needed to be met. Jones Associates and Eastside Properties revised their contract so that Jones Associates could complete those conditions. They also added an additional flat fee. In 1980, Eastside Properties paid Jones Associates some of the money that was due. The reason for withholding the rest was that Jones Associates hadn't obtained county approval of the short plat application. Jones Associates brought a money due action against Eastside Properties to recover the rest of the money. The trial court dismissed the action, stating that county approval of the short plat application was a condition precedent to payment. Jones Associates appealed to the Washington Court of Appeals.